Blockchain analytics firm Nansen is out with a new report that dives into the collapse of FTX after filing for bankruptcy. Joining us to discuss is research analyst at Nansen, Nicholas Polk. Um, hi, Nicholas, welcome to the show. So um, there's a lot in this report and maybe some people have already seen some of it. So I was wondering if you could maybe sort of quickly and succinctly um, tell us what are, in your view, the most surprising takeaways from this report? What are some of the, you know, what are some of the main points that people might have not known about or, or that you find striking? Hi, uh, first off, nice to join you. Um, so yeah, in our report, uh, maybe for people who do not know Nansen, we focus strictly on on-chain analytics. So in this report, basically we look at transparent traces on-chain um, and then try to sort of um, from there go to, to interpretations of that. So what was pretty pretty obvious from, from our part on-chain is that um, Alameda and FTX were like very, very connected from the very start. Um, we suspect they might have been using sort of the, the same wallets, um, which means that probably the person or people controlling these wallets um, might have been the same people or at least like very, very close to each other. Um, when they created the FTT token, Alameda got very preferential treatment from FTX got a bunch of tokens directly from um, from the FTX team vesting contract. In fact, they were um, hard-coded into the vesting contract as only recipients. I don't know if at the time the wallet was already um, like fully an Alameda wallet, but this, these are just like some of the traces that you can see on-chain since 2019, actually, um, that they were like very, very closely related and more closely even than um, two separate companies probably should be. Uh, another thing that you can see clearly there is that FTX slash Alameda, since they were very hard to separate, actually controlled vast, vast, um, yeah, vast chunks of the FTT supply. Um, they minted it uh, in, in July 2019, and then most of it actually went to to FTX or like to an FTX controlled wallet where it stayed and actually never left. So you have this huge gap between tokens in circulation, tokens that are actually accessible to the public, um, which have a certain price, and then also tokens which are not tradable, which are held on FTX sitting on the balance sheet and have like a nominal value, but um, actually never really, really entered circulation. This was uh, so, one thing that was surprising to us. Yeah. So Nicholas, how much of this stuff was available and accessible to investors prior to the collapse of FTX? Uh, I, I'm thinking about anybody who wanted to do their due diligence investing in the company or uh, just the average person who was uh, paying attention to markets. How much of this was out there already for people to see or to know where the problems were? And if not, why not? Basically, Everything we write on our report, since it is based on on-chain information, is publicly available for, for everyone to see. Um, the only thing is that you need to know how to interpret that data and, and how to make sense of it. And this is also why we couldn't see the collapse coming. We could see that something is going on, that they're closely connected, that there are suspicious flows. But since FTX is a centralized entity, um, you, you can't really see what's happening inside. You can't really know if... Um, like how much money should be there. You just know that money is flowing out. You, you don't know, like you don't have the comparison how much should be there. You don't know who is trading on the exchange itself. But um, the stuff with the weird FTT token supply, um, who controls it, this was all pretty public, yes. All right, and you know, you've, you've talked about how Nansen found 10.7 million FTT that were unaccounted for. Can you just break that down for somebody who's just trying to understand how that happens? Like, how in the first place does that happen? Um, so yeah, basically they have a total token supply that they state in the documents and that we also saw on-chain minted. And then um, they have like a breakdown, like how much of the supply goes where, like half of it goes to FTX, then um, of the remaining half, I think three-fifths, still go to FTX for like ecosystem funds, stuff like that. And then they basically break down who gets which tokens. And if you sum all of this up, you don't get back to the initial um, to the initial supply. And there's just like 10.7 million 
um, tokens where they don't write anywhere w w where they go to, basically. And if you look on chain, there are still around that number of tokens in, in some wallets that have never been touched. They're still lying there um, until today, and we don't really know who those wallets belong to. So just quickly, finally, um, anything else that you've noticed from your data that might inform about something to things to look out for going forward? Um, just anything that's not, not related to this report, just in general that you guys are looking at that you, you, you think more people should be paying attention to? Um, right now, not really, but we can just really emphasize whenever you put money somewhere, is it a centralized exchange or like a decentralized yield farming opportunity, just make sure to, to monitor the contracts, make sure to monitor the, the outflows, since you could have seen before that large quantities were withdrawn, that, that the funds were being slowly depleted, and just really pay attention to the public uh, information, since this is... Um, one of the big reasons why we have blockchains is that this is transparent. So yeah, please pay attention to it as well.